This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we're recapping a thrilling 25-24 win for the Bates football team over Bowdoin. Plus, we look ahead to the men's basketball season and talk to the former Bates quarterback who held the single-season passing record until Brendan Costa broke it on Saturday. That's coming up on the Bates Bobcast. The Bates football team found themselves down 10 0 to rival Bowden at halftime and behind 24 13 with just over nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. But both times, the Bobcats rallied. And Bates prevailed by a final score of 25 to 24 for the program's ninth win over Bowden in the last 10 seasons. Interim head coach Ed Argast recaps the win. Halftime, you're down 10 0, and then something clicks in the second half. What were the biggest changes you noticed? between the first half and the second half? I think it was just our, our attitude of how we were playing. You know, um, I think we were going through the motions a little bit in the first half, and in the second half, we made a point of it to do our job. And uh, the kids, you know, I told them at halftime, you gotta make plays. You know, you gotta make plays to, to beat these guys. And uh, our better players stepped up and made plays. And Brendan Costa, some Impressive deep throws once again. I know you want to take those shots when you can. What do you guys kind of look at to see when it's appropriate time to try to fire one 50 yards down the field? <laughs> I think any time with him. Yeah. You know, uh, you, you never know with him. That, that, that ball comes out of there and uh, just lands in. The, those, two, those two touchdown passes were really impressive. If you watch them on film, I mean, they went a long way and they were right on spot. And he broke the single-season Bates record for passing yards. What does it say about what Brendan was able to do in terms of throughout all the history of Bates to have this many passing yards? And the season's not even over. No, I think it's impressive. You know, he's he's a winner. He, you know, and, and he's not doing it to break records. He's doing it to help us win. That's what's great about him. Um, that, that's all he wants to do is win and help his teammates. And, and uh, he's got the ability to do so. And, and when he's on, you know, and he did some bad things. But when he's on, he's on. Certainly, and well, no turnovers for either team, actually, on Saturday. That's a big key in the game, no yeah. turnovers. Jackson Hayes, nice to have him back, right? Two yes, touchdowns. Well, yeah. What do you see from him? Uh, he's a player. You know, again, there, there are about a half a dozen guys in that receiving core that can break out at any day, you know. And uh, when they do, it's, it's fun to watch. Must have felt nice to see Derek Marino get the game-winning touchdown pass because I know he's had a couple uh, tough games, but he the one catch he made was the game winner. Right. Yeah. That's. I'll take it. <laughs> you know, I'll take it. Uh, that was good to see. Good for him. Good for his confidence. Good for our confidence. So they're, they're lining up for a field goal, twenty-eight yarder to win the game. What's going through your mind there at midfield? Watching well, I flashbacks to nineteen seventy-nine. We're playing Tufts, uh, playing a seven or six and one Tufts team. And we're winning, and they're going to kick a field goal to go up with no time on the clock, and they miss it. Oh. Same, same scenario, and uh, just as sweet, if not sweeter. The storming of the field, obviously. I, I don't know if I was expecting that, but there were a ton of Bates fans. What was it like to have all that support? I, I thought I was at a party. I mean, it, was, uh, it was great. It was great to see so many happy people happy for other guys. You know, it was really good to see. And I thought the defense, it was kind of a bend but don't break defense, I guess, sure. on Saturday. What were your thoughts on their performance? Uh, they, they're clutch. I mean, they're, they're, they're consistent now. Um, they're, they don't have lapses like they used to. They, they don't, they're, you know, we're not exploding in the wrong direction. I mean, it's, they, 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 they've kind of calmed down and got things under control. And Coach Davis has done a great job of managing their game. And I'll tell you, the offensive line played great, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, blocking little guys that stunt around all the time is, is not an easy task. And uh, they, they did a really good job. Excellent. And I also saw Bowden try to fake punt once, but you guys were ready for it. Uh, like. was, yeah, that was, uh, that was heads up. Yeah. No doubt. Well, you got Hamilton this week um, coming to town noon, senior day. Uh, what's it going to be like to honor all these seniors? I know some are planning on coming back. It's <laughs> sure. a mix of people. But what's it going to be like, you think, honoring all these seniors Saturday? Uh, I think it'll be exciting. You know, it'll be good for them, good for their parents. We want to thank the parents and thank, you know, thank them. And uh, it, it'll be interesting. 
going back to the game Under the Lights, I mean, it just seems like it just has a different atmosphere than a than a typical day game, right? It does. It does. Yeah. There's no electricity in the air that uh, that that's different. And then, um, just any other thoughts you want to share on the game we haven't got to talk about? No, just uh, we got to get this last one. We get this last one. Uh, it's three first time we've had three wins since 2016. Mm. So it'll be an important one to get. All right, and our guest, thanks so much. All right, thank you. Senior quarterback Brendan Costa threw four second-half touchdown passes to lead the team to victory. We have a video feature on Costa and fellow senior Jackson Hayes you can watch now on our YouTube channel. But for the Bobcast, we chat with senior wide receiver Christian Oliveri, who caught a 57-yard touchdown pass in the third quarter and later had a 50-yard reception to set up Derek Marino's game-winning touchdown catch late in the fourth quarter. Christian Oliveri with us here on the Bobcast after a huge game against Bowdoin this Saturday. And first of all, Christian, the 57-yard touchdown, I had a great view of it. You stiff-armed the guy, knocked him down, got into the end zone. Take us through that play from your point of view. Yeah, so um, I knew I was going deep before the play, and uh, I saw the safety line up. I mean, I knew I was just going to put on the Jets and just hope that Brendan would throw it to me. And I just ended up making the play. The deep ball seems to be something that you particularly are good at, uh, something that the Bobcats try to get to you. When did you start to sort of become that big playmaker in your mind? Um, I knew I always had it in me. Um, I'm one of the fastest guys in the fields all the time. So, yeah, I just, I just got to put on the Jets and hope that Brendan throws it deep. Yes, well, growing up, I was going to ask about that. I mean, obviously, Brandon's talked about your speed as well. Did you ever run track or anything like that, or have you been a football guy the whole time? I've, I've actually never played track. I've, uh, I've always been one of the fastest kids. I actually played quarterback in high school, so okay. I wasn't really able to utilize my speed as much as I am now because it's much easier when you're on the outside and you're able to just have so much room and ability to run. So I'm love that I, I love that I'm able to do that right now. So high school quarterback... What appealed to you about Bates? Did you come here thinking you might play quarterback or they want you at another position? I knew coming here I'd probably end up playing receiver. I think that's kind of the skill set that I have, um, and it's definitely a lot better for me personally. I, I like catching the ball a lot better than I like throwing it. Mm. So it wasn't much of a, too much of an adjustment, it sounds like. No, no. I played a little receiver mm-hmm. in my football career, but not, not much. But it's always something that I really wanted to do. So when you're looking at colleges, what made Bates the place for you? Bates was one of the only NESCAC schools that actually reached out to me and recruited me. Um, I definitely wanted to go to a NESCAC school um, when I was a senior. That's pretty much all I was looking at, and Bates was the only school that gave me the chance. And as soon as they came to me, I know I knew that this was going to be the, the right place for me. So this year's been kind of interesting for you. Um, they started off thinking you might be the running back, and then they scrapped that after a few games, made you a receiver again. What was it like starting the year, though, at running back? Um, I mean, I, I'll i do anything to yeah. uh, help out the team and all, but um, there's a few injuries at receiver, mm-hmm. Jackson, Hayes, right. and Muhammad that went down. So I'm kind of the person where they can just throw me wherever. So um, I was I was really happy that I was able to play more receiver than running back because I definitely think it's better for me in terms of my skill set. So I was happy about it, but as long as I'm out on the field, it doesn't really matter where I'm at. What was the environment like at Bowdoin from your perspective? I mean, a great atmosphere, lots of Bates fans, obviously. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> There's a large crowd from both uh, both sides, but um, the night game is awesome. I miss, that's one of the things I miss going to college is playing at night. Mm. It's always fun playing under the lights, and it's awesome having a huge crowd there to support you, especially at an away game like that. Big senior class. What's the senior class like? There's 26 of you. Huge senior class. Um, I'm going to miss them when they leave. Uh, we're all so close. Um, still hasn't hit me that um, we're all going to be dispersing next year. Not me, of course, and uh, um, a few other guys that are fifth year in. But mm. um, we're going to miss them a lot, and it's going to be a lot different next year without them. That's going to be my next question. So fifth year for you coming back. Uh, how excited are you for another season of football? I'm super excited. <laughs> I could not imagine this being my last uh, season of football. I would be absolutely devastated and I'm, I'm happy that I got a second chance especially after a season that hasn't really ended the way that uh, we all were expecting so I'm just super excited. I was gonna say there's been a lot of close games this year I mean the team clearly there's a lot of potential there that has been unleashed at times right? Definitely um, I think we've lost three games by a single score right. and that could make a huge uh, difference in our record we could have been 
five and three at this point or or four and four and four or whatever right. but uh it just stinks only having two wins when you know that you could have had more than that obviously the win over Bowden the, t- the program's now beaten Bowden in nine out of the last 10 years what's Bates Bowden rivalry like from your perspective um I mean it's just awesome going out there and competing with uh with your rivalry rivalry it's always the best but um it's even better when you can come out on top so it's just awesome winning those games and especially when it's close too it's better in my opinion to have close games in the rivalry than just blowing them out do you feel like the fact that you were a high school quarterback helps you build chemistry with brendan as the quarterback here could you kind of know what he's going through i would say no okay. just because <laughs> in high school i wasn't much of a thrower i was more of handing it off or just running it myself okay. so i've never actually played in a spread offense before this is my first time gotcha but I can I can kind of understand what he's going through, all the pressure he has with the ball in his hands. So I, I kind of respect that aspect of it. But this is my first time being in this sort of offense, so it's new to me as well. It's a lot of fun, isn't it, though? It's so much fun. Throwing the ball is a lot, a lot more fun <laughs> than running it, especially when you're playing receiver and catching the ball. Yeah. Well, how have you built that chemistry with Brennan through the years? It's been built both on the field and off the field, um, obviously throughout practice, uh, we meet in the summer once a week, uh, quarterbacks and receivers in um, the Massachusetts area. Mm-hmm. So just practicing with him on the fields and uh, off the fields. I mean, we see each other all the time. We're eating lunch, dinner, breakfast together, um, hanging out. So the chemistry's built both uh, on the field and off the field. Great. Well, any other thoughts you wanted to share about this past weekend's victory over Bowdoin or on the season in general? Um, I'm just really happy that we ended up winning against Bowdoin, and um, I'm just really sad that the season um, is coming to an end, and I'm going to have to say bye to all my best friends, all the seniors. But you will be back next year. Looking forward to it. Christian Oliveri, thanks so much. Yep, of course. Thanks, Aaron. Defensively, junior linebacker Tony Hooks continues to shine for Bates. He leads the NESCAC in tackles with 85 on the year, tallying eight more on Saturday, including a tackle for loss. Happy to have Tony Hooks with us here on the Bobcast, celebrating a dramatic victory over Bowden. And before we get into the details of the game, what was it like for you? Were you on the sideline or were you on the field for that field goal at the very end? Um, oh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. And I was on the field for that okay. uh, for that missed field goal, and it was awesome. Um, I actually didn't even see it. So I, I went to go try to get the block, and then I heard the cheers from the crowd. And I, I didn't know if it was coming from our fans or theirs. Right. And then I, I turned and see uh, our fans storming the field, and it was, it was electric. It was the best feeling. Yeah, what was it like to have such great fan support there on the road? Yeah, it was awesome. So in high school, I went to a small school, so it wasn't a lot of like fan support at games. But this was just a great atmosphere. It was like it seemed like the whole school was there. There's a lot of chance throughout the game, and they really gave us a lot of energy in the game. And the defense, you know, contained Bowden there. They were up ten nothing at halftime. Gave a couple touchdowns in the second half, but got the stops we needed them the most. What what impressions on how the defense played? Yeah, I mean, I guess. Just, just start with how the defense played it. Always, always uh, give a big shout out to Coach Davis. Uh, that man is amazing. Um, oh, he's the best coach I've ever had in my life, and I've been playing football for much of my life. And that man, like he has us most prepared for every game. Every game we go into, we know what what we're gonna get out of the team's offenses because he watches so much film. We watch so much film as a defense. We go over their plays throughout the week at practice, and I think he puts us in really good positions to just know like what, what to see, what to expect, and what to see from other teams. I, and the same ones for Bowden this past Saturday. He calls it the blueprint, right? The blueprint. What was the blueprint for containing Bowden? Yeah, the blueprint for containing Bowden was they had a good running back who yeah. he got the ball a lot. We knew he was going to have to get the ball a lot going into the game. So just kind of containing him, making sure he doesn't break free for big runs. Um, that was one of the biggest things. And then the, the quarterback, they like to run a lot of quick routes. A lot of quick, and we was like, so we were just able to like just contain that and just make sure we weren't giving up any deep shots and stopping the running back from breaking for big runs. That was the two big things going into, going into this game. Great. Well, you've had quite the year. You lead the NESCAC in tackles right now. What's allowed you to be freed up to make all those stops? Yeah, again, big shout-out to Coach Davis again, but also shout-out to the D-line in front of me. Like Those guys are playing amazing. Again, the game is like really the, – the way that our defense is set up, we run a 3-4, so – the three linemen in the front are really just like pluggers. They make sure they fill in the gaps. They keep the linemen off for me, so I'm able to roam around and make tackles, run sideline to sideline, and that's the same for all the linebackers. So it's really a big shout-out to Coach Davis for setting up our defense in that way and the D-line for doing a strong job this year. Jack Ryan, Nolan Potter, uh, Matt Conley, who's hurt right now, Finn Duffy, all those guys. Those guys are awesome. 
and then your fellow linebackers also having good years. Mike Bowman it seems like he might be undersized, but he's all over the field. It seems like, right? Yeah, Mike Bowman's the man. He, he plays big. Uh, yeah. Spencer, Spencer Adams, yeah. T- Tyler Hamilton, George Hawkins, all those guys. And at Juno, all those guys in the linebacker room. We, like we, uh, I like to think that we're the best core in the whole entire league. I think that we like to think that like as a whole, like we, our group, we're very close, close, close knit, and I think that. We work really hard. We put a lot of work in the film room, put a lot of work on the field. I think that that's led to our success this year. Yeah, George Hawkins had a sack there against Bowden, and it seems like he's always making big plays. He's a younger guy. What are you seeing from him? Yeah, that man's amazing. So George is actually my recruit, funny enough. So I, right. so my freshman year, George came up from Florida, and he stayed with me for an extended period of time. He was here about three or four days, and it like, almost felt like he was a student here. But, yeah, yeah, but it's, like, it's awesome to see George out there making big plays. He's a big-time player. I think he's going to be a big-time player for us going forward next year. He's just a playmaker. That's all I could say about him. Like, he's when we need a big play, like, George always seems to come up with a big hit or a sack. Like, he, he's, he's a really good player. Yeah, I'm curious, what do you tell guys when you're hosting them as recruits about what it takes to see as a Bobcat and why they should come to Bates? Yeah, I mean, I kind of just let the school do the talking, yeah. bro. Yeah, honestly, like, I, I try to show them a good time. I show yeah. I show them uh, just that we're close, we're close as a team. Uh, they, and they, you, they can just see that. Like, we hang, we hang out with each other a lot. We, go to, we eat lunch together. We practice together. We work out together. We hang out together off the field. So just all those things are just you, – you can really just, like, see it. Like, that's the proof is in the pudding, that, like, really. Like, just being here and being on campus and being around, like – this amazing campus, you have the field in the middle, yeah. in the middle of the school, like all those things that attracts guys, and I think that they really enjoyed here. And George is one a guy who's told me like he, he enjoyed being here as much as he enjoyed his visit. So like it's those, those things just like translate really well. I think that like, yeah, the base just does the talking, most of the talking for me. Well, you do a lot of talking on the field though. You're pretty vocal, right? Where does that come from? Yeah, I think that I, I just comes from just like the, the need this year, and I, I think that like I, I'm one of the leaders on the defense, and I think that just having that. But we need, need some vocality on the field. I think that communication was something we really lacked my freshman year. So kind of just, like, building off that. And, and this year, like, we wanted to emphasize uh, talking and communicating. I think that earlier in the season, we struggled with it the first few games of the year. And then was the game, it really clicked for us that the more we communicate, the better we play as a team, as a defense. And I think that that's just continuing to translate throughout the season. And I think that I, I've just been awesome to put in a place so I could be one of the leaders on the team and, and lead the vocality amongst our defense. Now, you're a junior, but we had the COVID year where everyone got an extra year of eligibility, and I know all this, some of the seniors are scheming to come back next year. What are your thoughts on maybe two more years after this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. I haven't thought that far, yeah, thought that far yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm enjoying playing with my yeah. brothers. I love being here, so we'll see. We'll but, see. Okay. But, yeah. Well, take us back. You grew up in Harlem. Uh, how did you first get involved in football? Yeah, so actually I, I was uh, pretty much forced into it. So I, probably, I was already playing football. I've been playing football since I was five years old, so pretty much my whole life. And but the start was really just my mom being like, you should try this, you should do this. And it was times when I wanted to quit, and she's like, no, you got to stick with it. And, and I, I, I got to a point where I just like really enjoyed it, and I started to like it, and I just continued from there. When did you start, start to think I could play in college? Yeah, that, that, I guess that kind of – I mean, like when I was younger, maybe like, like eight or nine, I was like, okay, like I love this sport. Like this yeah. is what I want to do. So I, I always knew from like that point on I wanted to play as long as I could. And I'm, I'm, I, got, I was fortunate enough to get a, get a spot, an opportunity here, and like – I'm like so thankful, grateful for this opportunity. So you went to high school in Rhode Island, right? How did Bates first get on your radar for um, college? Yeah, so my um, high school head coach, he actually used to coach back lacrosse back at Bates uh, back back in the '80s, a long time ago. So he told me about Bates from the start, and then I was just interested in trying to go into like a NESCAC school, a good academic institution, and being able to play like on a really high level. So that's like where my interest started, and then started talking to Bates coaches, talking to Coach Hall, who's no longer here, and the ball kind of got rolling from there. Your high school coach, what's his name? Um, his name is Al Brown. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that name. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he coached you in lacrosse and football. Yes, correct. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you got into lacrosse as well in the spring. Um, you don't play that here, but um, what got you into that sport also? Yeah, so at boarding school in high school, we were kind of forced to play a sport a season. Okay. So, so I play a sport every season. So yeah. I play football in the fall, obviously. Yeah. And then he was the head coach of both football and lacrosse team. And he's like, okay, right. you got to come out for the lacrosse team as well. And I think, I think I'm very, very glad I did play because it helped, helped a lot with like footwork. Just being able to stay in front of guys, that's what I did a lot in lacrosse. And I think it translates really well to the football. Certainly. So uh, you're a junior, but senior day coming up this Saturday against Hamilton. Tons of guys being honored. What are your thoughts on this final game of the regular season coming up? Oh man, that's a uh, very like a bittersweet. I want to say I'm gonna miss those guys a lot. Like the, the senior leadership we have on this team is phenomenal. Like uh, Anthony Costa, Brennan Costa, Mike Bowman, all those guys are just like just great leaders. And Quinn Woods, they all lead lead our team really well. And I think that I'm just like 
I just want to go out with a bang, honestly. Like, I want to go out with a big win for those guys, really. And I want to play my all, give all I can to them because they've given a lot to this program. And they've been through a lot through their four years here with the coaching changes, which is different, different, just different things going on off the field. So on the field, I wanted to really put it together and have, like, a great performance in front of our fans on Saturday. All right, through eight games, Tony Hooks and that's Cax leading tackler. Thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcat. Thank you. I appreciate it, Aaron Morse. We'll return to football momentarily. No other Bobcat sports had official competitions last week. But first, it's time to preview the men's basketball season. The Bobcats tip off their campaign this Saturday at 2 p.m. when they visit Clark University. Head coach John Furbush has some known quantities in the likes of Omar Saar, Stefan Baxter, Jacob Iwowo, and Andrew Snoddy, among others. But there are also a lot of unknowns after not having had a season last year. I'm very giddy about the season, Aaron, so if you feel like uh, I'm getting a strong vibe coming your way, it's because we are finally playing basketball again. But yeah, Steph and Omar uh, have been uh, are everything these, this preseason, and obviously Andrew Snoddy as well, and then adding Jacob recently uh, since soccer ended has, has been a great addition to the start of our pro, uh, practice. Yeah, and you mentioned that Jacoby Wowo, he's only been practicing for a few days, and he came on really strong the last time we had a season towards the end. Do you think he's going to be able to jump right in and make a big contribution from day one this year? Yeah, yeah. He's his, Now that we have a built-in uh, trust and relationship and I know him more, um, his transition into basketball will be a lot quicker than it was two years ago. I mean, he's if you don't know him, he he never stops talking, so which is good. Like he he's he, he's not just talking for the sake of it; he's actually talking with a purpose. And he's he's brought an element of communication to our defense the last five days that we haven't really had. So um, I envision his transition being much quicker than two years ago. I feel like him and Sar on the court at the same time. That's quite the presence down low, isn't it? Yeah, I mean Jacob can guard. I mean I wouldn't say one through five, but certainly one through four. And uh, yeah, Omar just I mean he's put on a little bit more weight. Uh, up up top, and he's yeah he's a. I wish I had a teammate like him when I played. We would have been a little bit. We no disrespect to my centers when I played, but he's he's a he's a special player on defense, and so I feel really confident about our half court defense and and holding teams into a, you know hopefully under their average. And then let's talk about the unknowns. Half the roster, right? We didn't have a season last year, so you have a bunch of sophomores we haven't seen play. We haven't seen any of the first years. Normally, I feel more prepared for these interviews, but I, I don't know what to say about them. So let, <laughs> we'll have you talk about them. Well, I don't know how much time you got because uh, there are a lot of unknowns that we're still trying to gauge. I, I guess the, the generically speaking, the great part right now is that um, it's so competitive. It's really not clear to me who's my top eight or nine yet. And so we had a little inter squad, inter -squad scrimmage this weekend, and, and not everybody was healthy, but... Almost everybody that played gave me a reason to play them next Saturday. So these next four days of practice are, are going to be really important for us just to find who we want to roll with to start, who we want to come in off the bench. Um, and I can name just about everybody on the roster right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out. It's new. We've had more practice time, but I've been able to do a lot more teaching. So uh, I, I would say typically my, my um, depth chart set, but I, I still don't know. So this is going to be an important week of practice to find that out. Did you learn much at all about the sophomores last year during the COVID practices you got to and the one scrimmage I think you had against Bowden with like seven people or whatever? Well, yeah, I mean, I, what I learned about them was I, we had great leaders last year with our senior class yeah. during the pandemic. So I, I learned that they they are more than willing to follow. Like, I think mm -hmm. they, they are very coachable. They they're, they listen to everything that we say. Everything matters to them. So I, I think they're just building some trust. But I in terms of game experience um, – all those guys have all four of those sophomores have played great, and I think they're all they all have reason to play this weekend. So we'll just see how this practice shakes out this week. And so the practice will help you decide maybe on an initial starting five, but then the, the games, the actual games, the non conference games are huge. And are you looking forward to mixing and matching a bunch of people, or are you kind of dreading it? Like, oh man, this is going to be a lot. Depth is a is a is a great motivator for guys. So yeah. um, you, you know, in years past, when you have like seven or eight guys and then a cliff, it's kind of easy. For me as a coach, but it's also hard if you're you have an injury or foul trouble. It, it makes. It, but now I feel like when we sub, we can we can really get more out of our our second group. And so, um, yeah, it's going to be hard. I, I've had individual meetings with the guys and just said, you got to be prepared to play 20 minutes on Friday and maybe two minutes on Saturday based on matchups or how you played the night before. So, it, you know, uh, that's just it's college athletics. So right at this point in their lives, you got to produce. I saw out there on the whiteboard and some guys have touched on it through the years, embrace the wrench. <laughs> That's the philosophy for base men's basketball. Explain it to us. Uh, 
I will as appropriately as I can okay. explain it. It's um, it's really embrace what's hard, and so we've we've always sort of stared adversity in the face, and you know I feel like that you get to a fork in the road when something adverse happens. You either have a really strong reaction to it positively or negatively, and and we we want the hardest road possible because um, we know it's not going to be easy. So when something happens in a practice or a game. We get excited about the fact that it's hard because winning's hard, playing the nest cack's hard. So if we think that like something adverse happens, that we're just going to be given a win or something easy, it's not going to. It's not how it works. And that's and that's way deeper than just their time here at Bates. It's like when you get into the real world, like things are going to be tough. So you got to make sure you like attack what's tough, enjoy that process, um, and don't run away from it in any manner. So that's that's what we've been preaching these guys is that yeah, these practices compared to last year are way harder. And at the end of it, you know what they say? Good. Thank you. <laughs> One player I wanted to touch on was Raheem Spence, because you mentioned the seniors last year. He was a senior in name, I guess, last year. Now he's back, right? Because yeah. extra year of eligibility, it's all a whole mess and everything. But what's it like having Raheem back? I'm excited to get him back in December. I think, that, again, the hard part for me with him is that he does he has built trust with me. I think he's an impact player day one, obviously, when he gets here. Mm. You know, the tricky part is we've had – you know, a few months of practice at this, well, by the time he gets back, we'll have practice. We've had a bunch of games. Okay, and so yeah. getting him into the flow, especially for playing good, we got to be careful how we do that. Um, but I think he's, he's, he's kind of like camouflage. He's always known how to blend in with the right players. Mm-hmm. And I think I'd be shocked if he wasn't uh, going to make an impact for us when he comes back in December. Okay. So we're getting him back basically for the next semester after the semester. Yeah. The day yeah. finals end, he can yeah. technically be with us. So okay. I think it's like, you know, maybe the Hussing game on December 13th, he'll be back on campus, and okay. then we'll sort of inject him however we can. Great, great. And then um, I guess what are your thoughts you want to share on the season we haven't got to talk about yet, what you're most looking forward to perhaps? Yeah, I, I just think from a from a culture standpoint, we're, we're focusing heavily on defense, and that's kind of what I've been doing when I took the program over. And, and obviously as you get uh, recruits, you know, year in and year out, like you have to cater towards what their skill sets are. And so um, – you know, we were offensively oriented the last couple of years, and, and, and we're kind of getting back to what I designed Bobcat basketball to be, where we're envisioning, you know, holding teams in the 50s and 60s at most. Um, and so, you know, that's something that we can control. That is the wrench, right? Defense is the wrench. It's hard. It's, it's not – and it's just a decision that you make. So we were really – I mean, excited to see how these guys um, sort of put all this, this action – or sorry, all these practices into action – and, uh, you know, I, th- I think when we do score the ball at a high level, we're going to be a tough team to beat. I wanted to ask actually about Ronnie Turner, a new assistant coach, right? Uh, head coach at Lewiston High School at boys basketball the last few years. Um, he obviously made a big impact there. He's from the area. What, what's it like having him on staff? He's amazing. He's, from a generic standpoint, I mean, someone who's been a head coach before, I don't care what level, he just he has an idea of what it's like to be in my shoes. So a lot of the things that – he does. He does knowing that I either don't want to do or don't have time to do, and he just does things. And he and he, he thinks like a head coach, and so that, that that perspective always is super helpful. But he's showing me all the reasons why I took him here is is he's built great relationships with the players, um, and he walks a really fine line between being friendly with them but also being their coach. And I think these guys have a tremendous amount of respect for him uh, as a person, but he's he's been able to really uh, show them his knowledge of the game. And so um, I, I couldn't be – excuse me, happier with the with him on staff with uh, Graham as well. Yeah, I was going to say, Graham Safford's still on staff this year. Also, right? Yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah, just to have both those guys that are uh, – they're very similar people. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just tough, blue-collar type of guys. So, um, I mean, they, they – you know, Graham was the epitome of the wrench when he played, and, yeah. and Ronnie's the same way. I mean, he just – his uh, there's the way he thinks about things is is just been different than other assistant coaches that I've had and and I think yeah just having a a local tie is always super helpful so that we can continue to do things in the community where uh, he has built in connections and and I I hope that more people assuming the rules loosen a little bit can come to the game from the community. As we touched on earlier, quarterback Brendan Costa broke the Bates single season record for passing yards in Saturday's win at Bowdoin. The record he broke stood for 44 years and was held by Hugo Colasante. From the class of 1978. We caught up with Colasante to look back on his magical 1977 season and his time at Bates. Happy to have Hugo Colasante on the Bobcast with us. Uh, now second all-time for passing yards in a single season in Bates football history. And Hugo, take us back though, when you were in high school, what eventually led you to Bates there in the, in the 70s? You know, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, 
we a group of us were being recruited at UMaine, four of us actually. And uh, we had gone out to, uh, to visit UMaine for a couple of days. It was a fun time. Uh, on the way back, uh, I remember our coach called from high school. He said, look, why don't you stop by at Bates? Uh, coach Gatto would like to talk to you. So we did. Went down, stopped at Bates. Spent a f- I actually spent a few days. They had a great time. Um, and then going back, you know, I'm going back and forth. You know, UMaine, Bates, UMaine. And then when I get back to high school, my coach pulls me aside and goes, you'd be an idiot not to go to Bates. I go, well, I guess I'm going to Bates. Uh it was fun. I had the interview when I was there with uh, Milt Lindholm, who was the Dean of Admissions at the time. Great gentleman. He was just a superb individual. Uh, really made me feel like uh, I belonged there. I was wanted there. So it was a no brainer. I ended up going to Bates and uh, the rest is history. And so you were obviously a quarterback for the Bobcats. When did you start playing quarterback growing up? Uh, I started, I played for uh, Boston College High School. Um, I went there for four years, played quarterback there. And then I went to Bates, played quarterback at Bates. Uh, I remember at the time I was, uh, when we came in freshman year, Bates had just had that 29 game losing streak. It was on Sports Illustrated. And we're all looking at each other, goes, boy, what are we getting ourselves into? But uh, it was good. The first year, I remember we went four and four and it was big for us. Uh, you know, I started as a freshman and uh, we had a lot of freshmen playing. I think seven of us started that year, uh, but it was a good group. Great bunch of guys we still keep in touch with. And then from there, you know, we just – the program started getting better and better with a lot more people coming in. Yeah, and so your senior year, the year you set the record for passing yards, the team went 4-3-1. and one. Um, Correct. Tell a little bit about who were some of your best receivers. How did it all come together for you from a passing perspective? Well, we, we had, I had two great receivers. I had Tom Burrow was a tight end. And I don't know if you know, Tom actually uh, got a try off the New England Patriots at the time. He was a free agent signee. Steve Olson, who has departed, was my uh, other end. Um, it was great, you know, just, just a great athlete. Both of them fantastic athletes. We had running backs. I remember our fullback, Gary Pugat, did very well, too. Um, we had a lot of others, uh, you know, uh, some freshmen playing at the time, some sophomores. So it was uh, a lot of good a lot of good players, a lot of uh, very talented group of athletes we had on the team at the time. The offensive line was fantastic. They, they just kept me upright all the time. Nice. Well, did the playbook open up a lot that year or what allowed you to maybe throw for so many? We, we had a, I think the offense that we ran was the old uh, Harvard multiflex, which um, I think was a precursor to their West Coast offense. Actually, we, you know, we try to keep it a, a, a balanced offense. You know, coach was always telling us you want to be 50 percent run, 50 percent pass, you know, keep the defense off their feet. And that was something we really prided ourselves in. Uh, a lot of movement, a lot of misdirections. Uh, Believe it or not, we did not not have a shotgun formation in the offense, which right. I would have loved to have had, considering you know just step back and throw the ball every time you want. So <laughs> it was a, it was a good offense to run. I really enjoyed it. So Vic Goddard was your head coach. Tell us a little bit about him. What are your memories of him? Uh, Vic was. Uh, I remember at the time when when I was being recruited, I was talking to Vic, and uh, he's one of the things he did is we recruited heavily within the. Massachusetts, uh, actually the urban areas, you know, you wanted kids that were uh, from winning programs. And a lot of the kids that he recruited were from really good programs. You know, I, I can mention quite a few of them, but um, a lot of us came in um, like Vic. I think Vic was very good. His assistants were, you know, uh, Coach Flynn, who was an offensive coordinator. Um, Webb Harrison, who passed away. He was the defensive coordinator. Chick Leahy. Uh, we had some good coaches. Good people. Really enjoyed playing for all of them. What are some of your fondest memories of being at Bates kind of in general? It was a fun time. <laughs> uh, you know, Bates is a very challenging academic school. And you know, I hope people realize that, you know, we didn't really have that much free time, you know, between going to classes and, you know, all the study in the afternoon at night um, and trying to juggle that with, you know, being an athlete. Uh, so that was something that we, uh, you know, really took to heart, you know, uh, try to get out there. Um and again, this was something the coaches, you know, made sure we did go to classes. We did study. We, you know, we did pass our grades because uh, they were adamant about that. But it was a fun time. At the same time, base was changing. Um, a lot more students were coming from abroad, I think, at the time. Um, you know, we also had quite a diverse, you know, student body. Um, but it was a very um, collegial place. I really enjoyed my time there. And I wouldn't change it for the world. I really highly recommend people. Highly recommended to a lot of folks. It's interesting you chose Bates over University of Maine. Um, just even though Maine was recruiting you for football nowadays, that's you know that's a Division One. Yeah, it's Division One at the time. 
you know, when I was being recruited, I also was a realist. Look, I had a chance to start at Bates freshman and sophomore year. I didn't know what I was going to end up playing at university. I mean, I could have, I could not even been a quarterback. I could have been a defensive back for all I know. So that's one of the reasons. Plus, you know, when you look at the academics, there's no, no comparison. You know, you got to go for the long term. Yeah, exactly. Well, memorable games for you. Any games that really stand out? Yeah, just a couple of losses. One to Bowden. I still can't get over it. I still have nightmares over it. Um, we should have. I mean, we 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 were just we you know we outgained them. We uh, you know time of possession, total yard. Just a couple of mistakes really buried us, and uh, that was the game that really hurt. The other one was against Trinity, where we lost by a touchdown, and uh, I think I threw a pick six that game. The only pick six I had in my career and it was just uh those are the two games that stick out you know the wins were good but the losses were the ones that I, you know we had a good team and the year after us um we had a really good football team you know Chuck Laurie was quarterback still a good friend of mine and that was something that really sticks out the losses believe it or not not the wins well yeah Chuck Laurie's in the Bates record book also so yeah you were, yeah, yeah. You, were, yeah. You, were, you were teammates with him then yeah Chuck was a year back of me we were very close uh worked out together a lot we still keep in touch uh yeah, he was a heck of a quarterback. You know, really uh, very strong arm, good athlete. So it was uh, fun playing with him. Was it a competition in the quarterback's room? Because he was obviously very good also. Was it more you were kind of a mentor? How did that work? No, nah, it was a combination of both. I mean, we were competitors, but we're also, you know, we mentored each other, not just high, you know, we were, we were good friends like that. Um, and, you know, it was we always rooted for one another. You know, it was uh, – you know, it, it is what it is. You know, you're competitors, but you're friends at the same time. So you're walking a fine line. But deep down, you know, I wish them all the best. And I'm sure he felt the same way about me, too. Garcelon Field now the days, of course, we installed turf there in 2010. Right, right. When you played, it was grass. I know it could get a little muddy. What were some memories of playing at Garcelon? Yeah, we had a couple of uh, nice uh, weather games. I remember one of them, uh, I think it was against Tufts. So it, it was just bad you know mud rain and we just you know looked like we were throwing a shot put instead of throwing a football but uh you know we had a good running game that year and so we're able to you know move the ball and beat toughs for the final game of the year which was a, a huge win for us too to get us yep. over 500 certainly so after, after 44 years your passing record has finally been surpassed for one season uh are you happy about Brendan costa achieving that or are you like yeah what? i think it's fantastic yeah. i wish him all the luck uh you know god bless him i i think it's uh, great that somebody broke it i think you know most of these records will fall eventually, you know, as the athletes get a heck of a lot better, quicker and taller. You know, it was good to be there, but, uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a team game. It's not just my record. It was a team record. You know, everything I did was uh, with the help of all the other teammates that were on the field, both offense and defense, special teams. So, yeah, you like it, but it's also, you know, it's part of us, part of that team. And, you know, that was that was a magical year for us. I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Well, a couple more questions for you, and then we'll let you go. Um, yeah. One, you know, after graduating from Bates, uh, I know you you worked for the New York Times for a number of years. I it, still do, yeah. You still do, yeah, in sales. Yeah. How did your Bates education kind of prepare you for your career with the New York Times? Well, you know, I was an economics major, and uh, one of the things that we do in our business, um, not just sales, you know, I'm responsible for quite a few transportation and customer service. Um, you, know, you, you look at – you your business and your background in economics teaches you, you know, how do you, how do you run a business? You know, you look at, you know, simple things that you learn in economics, you know, not the, the calculus part, which is I'm still trying to figure out today, <laughs> but uh, you know, the basics, uh, you know, uh, how do you run it? And it, it really helped a lot. Um, the Bates education was, uh, was one I'll never forget, obviously. And the people I've met, I think was more important. The connections I made, the friends I still have today, and you apply that going forward. And the thing that Bates taught me was to expand my thinking, you know, think critically, think outside the box. Um, and I think it's helped me a long way in my business career. Awesome. Well, any other thoughts you wanted to share we haven't got to talk about yet? Yeah, I just want to, I hope the team gets back on top. I know it was a tough year. I think they did a fantastic job considering when you lose a coach at the beginning of the year and, you know, new processes have to be put in place. It's tough. You know, it's tough because, you, you know, you're playing three years, a couple of years before a new coach has to come in, you know, even though he might carry on what they're doing, it's still new to the team, you know, and uh, I'm sure that had a lot to do with it, you know, how the schedule went, um, you know, the wins and losses, but I, I saw they finished up strong and they beat Bowden. So that's always a good year. Next time on the Bates Bobcast, we'll preview the squash and women's basketball seasons. 
plus a look back at Senior Day for Bates football and the opening weekend of action for men's basketball. Also, our cross-country teams compete at NCAA Regionals this weekend, and fall sports will have some all NASCAC selections to talk about. That's next time on the Bates Bobcast. Thanks.